and welcome back to Porphyrin Bootcamp. Today we'll be showing you how to utilise column chromatography to purify any crude porphyrin you have. For the column chromatography you will need an appropriate solvent mobile phase uh, for the porphyrin you're purifying, your crude porphyrin in a round bottom flask, a poking stick we like to call ours Clive, uh, a piece of cotton wool, a column of appropriate height and width for the amount of porphyrin you have, and some normal phase silica. Begin by plugging your column with the cotton wool. Drop the cotton wool into the column and poke it down utilising Clive until it nestles just above the tap. Clamp the column securely on a clamp stand utilising at least two clamps to do so. Next, you need to add the silica to your column. In order to do this, we use a wet loading technique. To do this, add the silica into a large one litre beaker. It's very important to do this step in the fume hood as the dust is very dangerous if you inhale it. Make the silica up into a slurry using the solvent that you prepared earlier. Once you've made the slurry, it should be the approximate consistency of wallpaper paste and should be relatively easy to pour into the column. If you find that it isn't, you can always add more solvent at a later stage. Carefully pour your silica slurry into your column using a powder funnel if you're worried about spilling it. The silica will settle a lot during packing so don't worry if at this point the slurry fills more of the column than you expected it to. Often the slurry gets thicker and more difficult to pour towards the end of the beaker. In order to prevent this you can add a little more solvent as you go along to make it easier to pour. Make sure the tap of your column is open and add bellows onto the top. Pump up the hand bellows to increase the pressure in the column and make the solvent run through more rapidly. Keep an eye on the column while it's running. The aim of this step is to remove excess solvent without letting the silica inside dry out. While your column is running you need to prepare your crude sample. In order to do this you need to dissolve it in the minimum possible amount of the solvent that you're using. Make sure that you use enough solvent to fully dissolve your crude with no solid product remaining. However, being sparing with your solvent use now means it will get a better separation on the column later. If you go back to your column, you should now notice that during this time, the solvent level has dropped and the silica has settled out to form a nice smooth layer. Careful monitoring of your column at this stage is critical. As for loading, you want no excess solvent above the silica layer, however it's essential that you do not let the silica dry out either. If you're finding this tricky, you can remove the bellows at this stage. This will allow the column to run under gravity rather than pressure and will slow the rate to which the solvent comes out of the column. Eventually the solvent level will drop to the same height as the silica in the column. At this point you will see no excess solvent above the silica but the silica will still remain translucent. At this point give the side of the column a good tap. This forces the silica at the top to form a totally flat layer and helps remove any air bubbles trapped in the column. Working as quickly as possible, add a layer of sand on top of the silica. You'll need a minimum of a centimetre, but you can use more if you find this helpful. Use a sand shaker to transfer the sand if you can't do it directly from the tub. Next, you need to transfer your crude product onto the top of the column. You will need to do this as carefully as possible without disturbing the sand and therefore it's recommended that you pipette the solvent on. Run it gently around the outside of the ground glass joint in order to let it run carefully down the sides of the column rather than disturbing the sand. Continue pipetting the crude product onto the column until everything is loaded, ideally in a band height of 5cm or less. Rinse the round bottom flask out with a small amount of dichloromethane and then use this to wash any product still remaining on the sides of the column so that everything is loaded onto the silica. Put the bellows back on the column and reapply the pressure, allowing the product to run down onto the silica so that the sand above it is dry but the silica is not. 
Once the sand is dry, very carefully add more clean solvent onto the sand and allow this also to run onto the silica until the sand is colourless and all the product is loaded onto the silica. Make sure you do this with the minimum amount of solvent possible and also ensure that you do not let the silica dry out at this stage. Once the product is washed off the sand, begin to carefully and slowly fill the reservoir with the solvent that you'll be using for the column. Once the reservoir is full, apply the bellows and allow the column to run under pressure. Over time, the product will move down the column, hopefully separating into one or more bands. You can ascertain which is the product which you would like to collect by comparing this to a TLC you have run of the product earlier. During the column, continue to keep your reservoir filled with solvent and do not allow your silica to dry out at any time. You should also now begin collecting the solvent that elutes from the column as fractions. At this stage, you can collect fractions of 100 mils or more. However, as your product begins to elute, you should collect much smaller fractions of less than 50 mils to ensure no contamination of your product. Your product will gradually move down the column in its band. You'll need to be patient with this and you should not be tempted to increase the polarity in order to increase the speed of the band movement as this will ruin your resolution. At this point the product is beginning to elute from the column. You should now start to collect your small fractions to ensure you do not contaminate your product. Continue to collect your product in small fractions. You can check the identity of the product you're collecting by TLCing it against a known sample or a sample of the crude. Here you can see that the product we were trying to collect is completely eluted from the column. At this point we don't need to add any more solvent and can dry the silica out. It can then be disposed of safely and appropriately at a later date. Once you have confirmed the identity of the fractions you have collected, you can vac down the ones that contain the product you want into one flask. This can then be precipitated to get the pure product.